If you're after something a little different in the Mercedes E-Class or BMW 5 Series executive sector, then it's still unlikely that you'll end up behind the wheel of a Cadillac CTS. Pity. Though your head will tell you it's the wrong thing to buy, you'd probably rather like one. Cadillac is one of those brands that needs no introduction from me. Or perhaps it does. You think of uh, slushy presidential limousines, tail fins and chrome. None of which has much to do with the way that today's Cadillac wants to be perceived by the modern European world. Now with the loss of Saab and Hummer, this is uh, General Motors' sole remaining worldwide premium brand. And it wants to be perceived as high tech and cutting edge, not retro and Elvis. But being exactly like its German competitors is just as dangerous as being willfully different. The challenge for today's Cadillac is to produce cars that are close enough to those being produced by the German establishment to interest executive buyers, yet different enough to stand out. It's a task that they began in earnest with this car, the second generation CTS. We've seen this famous badge before in the UK in recent times, but you'd be forgiven for not knowing that, so feeble have the attempts been to establish a foothold in the British market. A handful of uh, Jaguar XJ-sized uh, STS luxury saloons were sold here at the turn of the century, before GM tried again in 2005, uh, this time targeting the smaller BMW 3 Series size market, first with the first generation CTS and subsequently with the uh, Saab 93 based BLS model. Now a tiny dealer network restricted sales to the hundreds rather than the thousands and continues to do so. This Mark II CTS targets buyers in the bigger BMW 5 Series and Mercedes E-Class sized executive sector but will continue to be a pretty exclusive choice for those brave enough to consider one. American cars have never worked well on European roads, primarily because they work so well on billiard smooth US highways. Stick one on a typical British back road and you expect it to feel all at sea, not something Cadillac could afford to happen with this CTS. So they ditched this car's slushy stateside suspension settings and sent its engineers to BMW's backyard in Germany, the fearsome Nürburgring circuit to sort the thing out. Now as a result, it not only feels firmer than you'd expect for a Cadillac, it feels stiffer than you'd expect for a, an executive saloon full stop, which may not please those who spend their lives pounding up and down motorways. If you go for the entry level 207 brake horsepower, 2.8 litre petrol V6, or indeed the 247 brake horsepower, 2.9 litre diesel V6, things are a bit more compliant, but you still get the sharp turn in and like a body roll that's on the 3.6 litre petrol version with 307 brake horsepower that I'm driving here. And that'll probably shock sceptical BMW owners who thought a 5 Series was the only realistic rear wheel drive choice in this sector. Talk to your caddy dealer nicely and he may even let you have a go in the left hand drive Corvette supercar engine CTS V model that has a 556 brake horsepower, 6.2 litre petrol engine, capable of rocketing this car to 62 miles an hour in under four seconds, making it arguably the world's fastest four-door saloon. Cadillac are serious about this, you see. The 3.6 litre petrol V6 model that I'm driving here should be quite fast enough for most, powering from rest to 62 miles an hour in just 6.3 seconds to the accompaniment of a pleasing growl, and it's nearly three seconds to 62 faster than its humbler stablemates. Now, due to the fact that peak power isn't developed till nearly the top of the rev range, it doesn't feel appreciably faster than apparently slower BMW 530i and Mercedes E350 rivals, um, which they, those cars develop their power lower down in the rev range. Now this particular model has uh, steering wheel shift buttons that your passengers may uh, think that you're using even when you're not, it's so abrupt to some of the shifts. Um, at least it won't change up on your mid corner, which is a time where you, you'll appreciate uh, the steering, which though not BMW sharp, is a lot more direct and responsive than uh, some of the slushy offerings in this sector. Subtle, it's not. 
The looks of this CTS say more than anything else about Cadillac's intentions for this market, a sector that needs something new and different. If you find understated Germanic sophistication overrated, then you'll likely find this car muscular, exciting and different. A um, design that's arguably the most angular and edgy on sale in Europe today. It's not been an easy look to perfect either. This front fender is apparently the most complex panel ever stamped. From the distinctive stacked front headlights and the imposing front grille to this squared off tail, this is a car that'll get you noticed with its uh, flashes of chrome and reams of LED strip lights. If anything, it's even more shocking inside, at least if you're expecting the usual low-rent LAX rental car interior with loads of leather, useless gadgets, squashy seats and cheap plastic. This is clearly an American car that's been bullied into offering European-style quality. Caddies say that the dashboard design was modelled on that of uh, American computers, and if so, I'd quite like one. Hand-stitched leather adorns the top of a V-shaped centre console that could do without the silver plastic bits, but has a natty party piece that sees a touchscreen rising neatly out at you from the dash. There's a good view out from the supportive multi-adjustable leather front seats, and it all seems quite decently screwed together, if not with the same hewn from granite feel that you'd get in a Mercedes or an Audi. Rear seat passengers don't get the largest cabin in the class, and headroom may challenge the really lanky, but it'll probably be quite adequate for most. With legroom fine, as long as you're not uh, unfortunate enough to be sitting at the back in the middle astride the transmission tunnel here. Boot space is a little narrow, but the 373 litre total, though 150 litres less than you find in a 5 Series, is probably enough to satisfy most owners who will find this split folding rear seat arrangement that enables you to extend the luggage bay very useful. List prices suggest that you'll probably pay somewhere between 27 and 30,000 pounds for your Cadillac CTS, but you could theoretically blow close to 60 grand on one in the unlikely event that you choose the left-hand drive only CTS V model. Cadillac has also designed estate and coupe versions of this car, but it's the saloon version that gets the bulk of its European emphasis, especially when it has the 247 brake horsepower 2.9 litre V6 diesel under the bonnet, rather than the 208 brake horsepower 2.8 or 307 brake horsepower 3.6 litre petrol units. All are auto only, including the top of the range 556 brake horsepower 6.2 litre V8 CTS V model. Now, obvious rivals to the CTS include cars like BMW's 5 Series, Mercedes E-Class and Audi's A6, but to be honest it's more likely to be bought by executive sector buyers who were considering something a little different, like Jaguar's XF, uh, Lexus's GS, Volvo's S80 or Saab's 95. Traction and stability control, tyre pressure monitoring, adaptive by on headlamps that uh, move with you at night and a limited slip differential should all help you avoid an accident. But if you just can't, then six airbags are standard, including full-length curtain airbags and adaptive front bags that uh, adjust their deployment based on the position of the passenger and the seat. There's even a bonnet designed to protect unfortunate pedestrians who stray into your path. When comparing this car with obvious alternatives, you'll need to take into account the gigantic kit list that will cost you thousands to replicate elsewhere. You get leather trimmed, eight-way adjustable front seats, uh, cruise control, dual zone climate control, an auto dimming rear view mirror, uh, automatic wipers with heated nozzles, rear parking sensors and a mega 300 watt uh, Bose surround sound stereo with 10 speakers, uh, an integrated 40 meg hard disk, MP3 input and sat nav. Now you're only going to buy a big petrol powered CTS like this one if you don't give a fig about running cost figures in comparison with alternative German models. The uh, big Cadillac needs a bigger engine to match the performance of its Teutonic rivals. And that translates into a fuel consumption figure on the combined cycle of 25.4 miles to the gallon. 
and the equally forgettable uh, 264 grams per kilometre of CO2 reading. Now residual values are another thing that caddy dealers aren't going to want to highlight too much. Uh, you can expect to get between 27 and 35 percent of your original purchase price back after three years and 36,000 miles. But you need to balance that against the gigantic kit list and the lower upfront asking prices. Uh, bear in mind that the UK Cadillac dealer, uh, dealer network is tiny, uh, but uh, courtesy cars and collection and delivery to your front door should compensate. Insurance groups for mainstream models are between 15 and 17. British buyers who've never taken Cadillac seriously as a luxury brand need to try this one. Rivals shaded in terms of running costs, build quality and handling, but the differences are nowhere near as great as you might expect and will be outweighed for many likely customers by this car's sheer likability, kept very exclusive by a tiny dealer network. This is the best luxury car the Americans have made with an image that's hard to pigeonhole but very appealing if you want something different and don't mind shouting about it. If this is the kind of thing that Cadillac are going to deliver in the new millennium, then there's plenty to look forward to.